Yes, it's the technical difficulties we're playing. Citation needed. Joining me today, he reads books. You know, it's Chris Joel. Hello, I'm Chris Joel, Christ College, Oxford, reading references to surfing in the early King James Bible. Everybody's favourite, Gary Brannan. Gary Brannan. So the vicar, with a sickly smile, shook hands with the monkey and could never look the banana in the face again. <laughs> <laughs> and the bounciest man on the internet, Matt Gray. Hello, live studio audience! <laughs> In front of me, I've got an article from Wikipedia, and these folks can't see it. Every fact they get right is a point and a ding. And a special prize for particularly good answers, which is... Mystery, mystery, mystery. Oh, yeah. And today we are talking about Jack Churchill. Is this the method by which one raise a wartime prime minister? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that's the version of the verb you went with. Well, okay, that's, I'll be honest, there was a, a flip worse. of a coin, and I went with a clean one. <laughs> I thought a church had been raised ever since I have. <laughs> yes, you may track my undercarriage for wear and tear. No, no, it's for when he needs to see more authoritative. <laughs> oh, shit, he's a lot shorter than Stalin. <laughs> we, shall, we shall fight them on the beaches. <laughs> on the fields. And in the streets. <laughs> and in the treetops. <laughs> it's just like the idea that, that Churchill is now just sat about six foot about everyone else in a chair that he can't possibly get down from. At which point, there's a beeping noise and Stalin comes in on a cherry picker. <laughs> It explicitly says, at the end of this article, of no relation to Winston Churchill. Well, there you go, that's Aww. our first five minutes completely redundant. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that nutter who tried to fight World War II with a claymore? Oh, yeah. <laughs> episode over. <laughs> Sorry, you, guys. Thank you. No, that, now, you say episode over, there is a heck of a lot more to this story going on a here. A claymore is a proximity trigger. No, 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 it's, no, no, it's a hand and a half... Scottish sword. sword. Oh, sword. Yeah. Oh. Well, okay. Yeah. I mean, claymore is a mine as well. But yeah. no, this, yeah. this is okay. This different is... type of claymore. Yeah. As, okay. in, as in Scottish clansmen. Oh. I will see <laughs> off the entire continent on my. And that was basically his remit. Wow. That was what he went into the war to do. Wow. <laughs> Where do you think he was born? Not Scotland. <laughs> Not Scotland. You're absolutely right. He was born in Ceylon. Uh, oh. Okay. Right. Sri Lanka. Uh, and actually, you say drafted. He joined. Uh, oh, of, his yeah, own, when... of his own accord in, in the 1920s. So well, suddenly, because there weren't enough things to cut up in Ceylon. <laughs> well, yes. He left the army in 1936. Because there was not enough fighting. Well, he, mm. So he then worked as, as a few other things. What, uh, what might that be? One, one is, is a phrase I wouldn't associate with the 1930s, of a, of a job for a, a strapping young lad. Chef. IT is... technician. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Operative of a mildly successful nail bar. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit off the top. Right. Whoa! <laughs> Male model. I can really? see that. He also used his archery and bagpipe talents oh, oh, yeah. to play a role in a film called The Thief of Baghdad. Eh? With bagpipes? Uh, with the bagpipes. bagpipes of Baghdad. <laughs> Was it uh, originally The Thief of Bagpipes? Uh, he won uh, second place in the military piping competition at Aldershot Tattoo. But that was, was cake, that like cake? cake? <laughs> <laughs> Jinx! <laughs> you're gonna ice a cake with some bagpipes. Oh. Yeah, you can do five bits at a time if you blow hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also represented Britain at the World Archery Championships. So we he also sword. used the bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this, was, this was a longbow. Of course Ooh. it would be. Second World War breaks out. And he decides not to bring the longbow cause in practical or something. Wrong. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? He Hi, can I help? I've got one of these. <laughs> <laughs> he really was going to part like it was 1399, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so he was with the Manchester Regiment uh, in France and ambushed a German patrol. How did he give the signal to attack? Did he just scream and run? Not this time. <laughs> I'm going to give you the point. Here, this time. I'm going to give you the point because yes, he did that plenty of other times, but not this specific. He was in. He was in command of the the troops. How did he give the signal to attack? Did he have his bagpipes with him? A quick uh, pop on the high notes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> with the drone beneath. That's not this skill. That's not not the skill he used here. Uh, flaming arrows. Flaming arrows. Uh, I'm going to give you the point. He. Uh, he, he killed an enemy sergeant with the longbow. Oh boy! <laughs> that was a, that, he was the not with the arrow with the bow. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah with the stringy bit first. <laughs> oh, the, worst the only like person, to, wire. <laughs> to use the technical term the stringy bit of the bow. Yeah. <laughs> the last recorded person ever killed during wartime with a longbow and arrow Whoa. was that yes. German sergeant. Now, I've just noticed something. Yes. This man seemed to have a penchant, is that the word, for running into battle and screaming? Mm -hmm. Yes. He managed to go into several battles. <laughs> Many battles. Without dying? <laughs> yes. Yeah, but with the longbow, you are quite a way back. Norway, 1941, 
landing craft uh, and a raid on a German garrison. Yeah. Uh, I mean, paint me a picture. What? Uh... I'm thinking uh, night time, yep. I imagine. Uh, now, now, you see, it's a point of when he starts playing the bagpipes. Well, Fun- what is that coming from over the ocean? Yeah, that's what I mean. Worst accent in the world there. Uh. <laughs> 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 lands on Germany. Lands on Norway. <laughs> would, it, would, would that be the Boulogne part of Norway? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the German garrison out of France. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. Yeah, would you do it over the ocean or would you wait until the landing craft had silently approached the beach with the whistle of the wind through the trees as the clank of the metals hits the beach suddenly? <laughs> You're nearly right, yes. He, he leapt forward from his position, uh, playing on his bagpipes before throwing a grenade and running into battle. This man is a hero. Oh, yeah, if you're going to do anything, s- just the thought, just, just to be inside his head as he approached the beach, playing the, with the bagpipe ready to go, the grenade pin in his hand, thinking, yeah, we're going to do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is my time. <laughs> yeah, for the Again. 15th time. If that was me, I'd pull the pin, drop the bagpipe, and then, you know, drop, and then just be a loud parpy explosion. <laughs> Now, you say you threw a grenade. Did it hit anything, or did you throw uh, it by not, mistake? It's not recorded here. I don't know. Why? Hero. So we've had France, 1940. Norway, 1941. Where was he in 1943? Italy. Correct. <laughs> well, he's it, got what, some I... good air miles, hasn't he? <laughs> not sure. Not sure air in? miles on, on, the, on the army's flight. <laughs> I've seen a video of a bagpiper in a parachute. It was... It was... <laughs> 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 Close. I'm going to drink that later. Go on. Yeah. It was in the 70s. The news, basically the one show of the 70s uh, nationwide did a segment. I don't know why, because I've only seen the clip itself. It's a bagpiper, a low altitude plane. He's got the parachute on one of those cords that automatically That's triggers line. it. Yeah. Jumps out, starts playing uh, Scotland the Brave on the way down. And it's great because he gets in, he gets the drone on, but then it hits the ground. And he's, he cannot do a landing and hold on to the bagpipes no, at the same you've got, time. You've got, to pull, you've, got to, you've got a flare, you've got to pull down both straps and... If that's a technical term, yeah. so be it. But all, <laughs> all I heard was, no, 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 no. <laughs> As he got dragged along by the wind on the floor with a mournful parp of an empty and bagpipe. A mournful oh. parp of a bagpipe. Yeah. Uh, this, this sadly was not a parachute. Uh, this was, this was a, a landing site. Was but, this, uh, again, the same as Norway, yet slightly sunnier? Uh, this was the same as Norway, yet slightly more. Oh. More. What hasn't he used? Whoa, he has his bow as well. Yes, he had the broad, <laughs> he had the broadsword, the, the longbow, and, and the bagpipes, and the grenade. Uh, it doesn't say. Doesn't say. He's like the things you, the people you get in computer games. Like it's funny because you could never carry all of these. How is he carrying all of these? <laughs> Where did he get that from? I he was it. holding a sword a minute. Ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing the bagpipes, which is a, again is a two-handed instrument. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How fantastic would it be if he just had a Batman though? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you know, going, going back like another 50 years where you just have a gentleman's gentleman with you and just take him on the battle broadsword if you would <laughs> yes, he's sir. a little way off um, longbow thank you number no th- nothing's happening bagpipes we'll send <laughs> some more number three wood for the grenade <laughs> 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 Just Might oh. I suggest the pitching wedge, sir? They're awfully dug in. <laughs> oh, I was thinking more cricket bat. I was thinking, I was thinking, uh, picture up, fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going full zombie into that. <laughs> well, I seem, I seem to recall someone saying that the effective range of a grenade is further than you can throw it. Right, so you do need something like a bat behind it then. Well, or you need to chuck it into somewhere and move, move out. Right. Christian, you you're, you're bat- chucking it. I'm running the other way. <laughs> I've got you the back. Want a bat a grenade. <laughs> Yeah, I reckon I would. Oh wait, no. <laughs> I mean, to be Extra fair, second if, on the de- detonator just for just for the pitch up. Yeah. If, you, if you miss it, you're in trouble. <laughs> Look, I didn't say this wasn't one for the courageous soldier, did I? <laughs> he infiltrated the town. Yeah, which he's in the bagpipes. Hang yeah. on, not they. He in- uh, infiltration and this man don't sound like words that go together. <laughs> well, you see, he was he was ordered to capture a German observation post. How did that go? Uh, surprisingly well. <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you the point. He captured 42 prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> no one tried to shoot the bagpipes. I mean, I'll be honest, it's not the first thing you... Well, I don't know. If you, if you say it depends how anti-bagpipes you are. If, if, you've been if on I Western, was there, that would be the first thing I'd go for. <laughs> you've got three bullets. Why do you shoot the bagpipes three times? <laughs> <laughs> I can just see the bullet going through and going, yeah, shut my pipes. <laughs> no, I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't Scottish. I'm going to point this out. Yeah. He wasn't Scottish. Yeah, but Would they you... wouldn't know that. He was captured. And... Yes, <laughs> was he? Do you, do you know the story there? Oh, I can only presume that he was captured, went along willingly, beat all the guards at chess and poker, drank, drank the 
camp commandant's rum, then dug his way out with his teeth while the commandant was passed out, chewing on broken glass and spitting it at guards, before having relations with the entire female population of the nearest town, lighting a cigarette on the ground, not even using a match, flipping the V and then walking into the camp and saying, what have you has been doing? <laughs> Tom. Just as a guess. <laughs> Tom, please ding. For yeah, the love of God, God, please ding. I mean, it's not even close, but I'm getting the point for it. Um, uh, crawled under the wire through an abandoned drain and tried to walk to the Baltic coast. Ended up being recaptured, escaped again, walked 93 miles to Verona in Italy and met the Americans there. I bet they were delighted to see him. <laughs> uh, and then continued and went to Burma. Arriving in 1957. <laughs> well, this thing, by the time he got there, what had happened? Was war over? Yes, absolutely right. Oh. Um, that must have been very disappointed for him. <laughs> and I'm going to quote here, if it wasn't for those damn Yanks, we could have kept the war going another ten years. <laughs> See what you did? <laughs> you ruined that man's 1940s. <laughs> wow. That is an insight into his mind, isn't it? Yes. Hang on a minute. I really genuinely want to ask you a genuine question. What the frick did he do after the war? Because he is tooled up and angry. Well, he you know, him on the checkout in Sainsbury. <laughs> oh, no, he walked back from Burma to Korea. When that was over, he walked to Vietnam. <laughs> Um, the answer is, and I'm, I'm giving you a retroactive point here, Gary. Oh, oh respective point. Because you've already said the word. What did he qualify as in the army? Supermarket? <laughs> I can't remember what I said. You are now a professional supermarket, sir. <laughs> Where did that come from? Because I think he said, said, said Imagine him in the supermarket. <laughs> and that's all there was there for that brief second was the word supermarket. <laughs> supermarket. He became a Londis. That's what happened. Pick a word, <laughs> anyway. Anyway, anyway. anyway. Pulling bottles of Pulling wine out. <laughs> from under the kilt that he's not wearing, yeah. <laughs> Uh, nail bar? <laughs> Parachutist. Oh! Uh, there are stories of him assisting a medical convoy, coordinating evacuations, all sorts of things like that. And then, coming back to, to uh, England, went back and made another appearance in a film. Was he in a Bond film? <laughs> no, he was in Ivanhoe. What, what, did, he, uh, what did he appear as? A bagpipe. Uh, uh, Close. A longbowman. <laughs> yes, absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. What skill did he pick up in late 1950s Australia? Boomerang wanging. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wanging it's... being a very specific word there. I think that that action could... I, I think, no, 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 technically it's boomer wanging. But ah. that's, uh, and also, no, a wang is underarmed, isn't it? As in welly wanging. Ah. Okay, so the, the phrase, wang there, everyone. The, the phrase welly wanging was just lost on half the audience. <laughs> Gun boot oh. throwing, Gun if boot you are throwing. from the home counties. Yeah. No, don't they have the word welly? No. Oh, no. Oh. Well, it's a Wellington, isn't it? As in after oh, Wellington. Yeah. So, but, but it also brings back to the, the excellently named uh, 1980s computer company from Oxfordshire, Wang. <laughs> and that Oxford United in the 1980s were sponsored by <laughs> Wang. <laughs> so on the front of their shirts uh, for years and years was the word Wang, repeatedly. <laughs> Late 1950s, Australia, what was being developed there? Surfing. Yes, absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he became a passionate, I'm quoting here, passionate devotee of the surfboard. One of the first people in Britain to surf. And specifically, one of the first people in Britain to surf what? Seven no. Bore. Point. You're absolutely right. That's the uh, Tidal River thing, isn't tidal, it? Yeah, yeah Tidal Surge. Yeah, there was, there was a, a single tidal wave that on, on particularly strong tides rolls up the River Seven. And nowadays, like, it's filled with surfers and boats and drones flying overhead. It's just this guy on a surfboard. One. Pissed off guy from Ceylon playing the bagpipes, swinging a claymore around his head, having finally conquered another element. <laughs> and me, hang up, opening your curtains and. I can, yeah. can you hear bagpipes? I can't hear bagpipes. That's completely impossible. By this placid River Seven with the occasional, oh, sweet George. <laughs> no! Bristol! You're mine! <laughs> Did he end up declaring war on himself? <laughs> uh, in, in retirement, it says, his eccentricity... Retirement? going <laughs> to retire? How is this man going to retire? His eccentricity continued. No way! <laughs> you just thought he'd have settled down. You know, people, when they hit the retirement, are usually so placid. I've seen Last of the Summer... Was he doing Last of the Summer wine only with Claymore's? <laughs> <laughs> Bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> He startled train conductors and passengers <laughs> by throwing his briefcase out of the train window each day on the ride home. Why? 
Did he try and get it in one of the post office nets for the for the oh, travelling yeah. post offices? The what? Uh, the way they used to pick up mail in ye olden in ye, not ye olden days, but you know, in the days of travelling post offices, you would have a hook by the side of the railway line that would dangle a bag full of mail. At which point, the uh, carriage would come towards it. It had a bit of sticky out net that would be dropped out at exactly the right moment. Would hit the hook, the mailbag would drop into the net and be sprung into the carriage, at which time another hook would be slung out from the train with another bag of mail that would be dropped in the same location, like that. Wow. Precise timing and speed and location. In such a way that they don't have to stop to pick up the mail. And exactly. The mail. It it's just all goes. just a train goes, and then the post has happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then the letters be. Yeah. This so is the night mail crossing the border. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the noise of it, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> and suddenly, bag. <laughs> And in this case, briefcase and Claymore and Angry Man from Ceylon. <laughs> he wasn't trying to get on the mail pole. He, right. he was aiming for a specific target. His garden. Oh! <laughs> that is amazing. I want to do that on the way home. Doesn't quite work in the tube. I was but... going to say. <laughs> oh, okay. Which really sucked when he moved to London. <laughs> <laughs> he lived at the age of 90. No he, surprise. He Who could kill him? <laughs> yeah. death, death just walked away. He died in 1996 and uh, was later named Whoa. one of the finest explorers and adventurers of all time. Oh. By himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the Royal Norwegian Explorers Club. <laughs> hey! At the end of the show, uh, congratulations, Chris. You obviously win this one. Yeah, for the, yeah. You won this one. Is that, is that the madman <laughs> with the, with the claim? <laughs> yes. I'm going to say yes, that's, that's, that's there as a record. Right. It really is. Uh, congratulations, you win two words mixed together by the actor who played Padme in the Star Wars prequels. No. It's a Natalie Portmanteau. Oh, hey! <laughs> I like that. With that, we say thank you to Chris Joel. There you go. To Gary Brannan. To Matt Gray. I've been Tom Scott, and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh.